Hello gamers, I am back yet again. I'm playing some more ColecoVision games. The last four out of the seven that I recently bought. So this will be the last ColecoVision for a while until I can find another game. Or games. Uh, this is Gorf, and um, that's what's in it right now. The other three games that we're going to be playing here are Zaxxon, and Frontline, and Smurf Rescue and Gargamel's Castle. And I'll be playing them in that order. So, I am, uh, as usual, playing on a real ColecoVision, real cartridges and all that. And even though I have this big-ass roller controller still set up, none of these games actually use it. So I'll just be playing with a regular controller hooked up to the roller controller, hooked up to the ColecoVision. So, here we go. Uh, as I have not played any of these games in any uh, depth previously, that makes this a Jeremy Tries. The one thing I did figure out in my playtesting in Gorf here is, obviously this is a, a Space Invaders clone. But one thing I've never seen in any other Space Invaders clone that I actually like about this, is if you know your shot is going to miss, then you can cancel your shot by hitting the shoot button again. And I'll demonstrate. I'll intentionally go way over here. And shoot up there. See? I don't know if that's actually an intentional part of the game design or if it's a bug. But uh, it is helpful. Unless you get shot anyway. Hmm. So something else that's different about this uh, version of Space Invaders, effectively, is that you've got this shield thing, uh, the, the white circle that's rapidly being destroyed, like I am, <laughs> that goes all the way across, as opposed to in Space Invaders where you have the smaller little shields that can actually take more damage. Wait, wait did you see that? Like a big chunk of the shield just disappeared for no reason. What the hell? I think I win. Hey, you got a new viewer in the chat. It is Ethan's Amazing World. Welcome, Ethan. Ethan's Amazing World says, I subscribed because of how you stole your own Game Boy. You know, surprisingly, that has been the my most popular video on my channel. I'm not sure why. Maybe because the pseudo clickbaity title, even though it is true. I mean, in the story that I tell, which was true, I did steal my own Game Boy, so it's not that clickbaity. But uh, thank you for subscribing. I'm going to give Gorf at least one more shot here. Come on. Come on. We have to wait, that mandatory startup wait, for all the licensed games. I think there's a little bit of glitchy movement for the dudes. That's weird. Since there's not as many of them, as there is in space, ba space Invaders. At least I don't think there is. They start going like turbo speed pretty quickly. Oh, fucker, it went right through him. I think I should get a score bonus for the shield remaining. Oh, fuck! Big ass blast from tiny ass ship. They had to call that thing the noisy cricket. <laughs> Apparently, he switched into sitting duck mode. So, this mode is actually a little bit more like Galaga. Except uh, their movement pattern isn't nearly as fluid as in Galaga. And organic, I guess you could say. Whoa, what the fuck's going on here? Space warp, it says. So this is, this is different entirely. I shot that thing. Or maybe those are actual shots and I should be avoiding them. <laughs> I just noticed something funny. 
the baddies and their shots do correctly scale out of this space warp thing in the middle, but my shots going in don't. <laughs> they just go straight up the screen. And again, this is like a, another game here. This one they call Flagship. Shoot my shots, bitch. What the fuck? Fuck. So what game was that one like? Ugh. That ending theme is... Makes my ears bleed. Come on, let's go. Wonder what ever happened to Coleco. Actually, I know vaguely what happened to him. I'm pretty sure that the video game crash of the early 80s took them out. But then after that, like uh, several of the companies recovered after that. Like of course Nintendo did. Of course uh, Nintendo at the time did not have a North American presence. But um, obviously they were unaffected in Japan or they recovered from it in Japan. Now was the video game crash localized just in North America? It might have been. Um, but uh, Atari was able to make it through the crash. Now, mind you, they were never as popular again as they had been before the crash. And they kind of caused the crash, so that's probably part of it. But um, to my knowledge, Coleco never made another console. Not even before the crash. And I think maybe the rights were bought up by some other company. Obviously someone did. Because there is a uh, Coleco flashback that you can buy. You know, it's like the Atari flashback. It looks like the original system. But uh, it doesn't play the original cartridges because uh, it already has a bunch of games built into it. But yeah, what happened between this console... What happened between this console, the Coleco, and the release of the flashback? Oh, that actually helped. <laughs> Fuck face. Is he gradually getting lower on the screen? Oh shit! Not anymore, he's not. You've been promoted to space captain. Okay. And now what happens? Looks like, yeah, the games re um, Maybe not. I was going to say the games repeat, but they get faster. But maybe this is faster. Why is this game called Gorf? I mean, other than that being the sound that a... a dog with a stuffed up nose makes. Piss. Okay, that's enough Gorf. <laughs> but presumably you continue to get um, promoted each time you run through the levels successfully. So that was Gorf. Which, by the way, that's what the cartridge looks like, since we didn't see it before. Now I'm going to play Zaxxon. Zaxxon, like Gorf, 
is a game that was prom or, uh, ported to a number of different consoles at the time. And I think I've played it in one of my previous videos on my channel on the Atari 2600. So, um, as my frequent viewers know that I love to do, I like to play uh, ports of games across different systems and compare them as far as technical capabilities go. Whoa, whoa, okay. Okay, I'm just getting the hang of the controls here now. See, it's a little disorienting because it's isometric, but you're not controlling it isometrically. Unless you do what I'm doing right now, which is uh, tilt the controller so that the orientation matches the screen. As is typical of flying games, the up and down controls are reversed. So pushing up on the stick makes you fly down and vice versa. Fuck! Not very precise collision detection here. At least for my shots, whenever I collide with something it's pretty good. Just like that. Shit. That one was my fault. What was that? Did I get like a lock or something? Or did they get a lock on me? <laughs> or actually, no, I think it's the little crosshair and the bleep. Fuck. Mm -hmm. It looked like I wasn't high enough, so I kept trying to go higher. But it looked like the crosshair and the beep uh, was the game's way of telling me that I was lined up with a guy. So that's actually pretty helpful. So, so far this is, you know, dramatically more advanced than the Atari 2600 version, which is to be expected. It's a more technically advanced system. Also, I'm starting to feel like this stream slash recording is feeling very clinical in the commentary that I'm giving. So, uh, penis ass dick fart piss. Yeah. What the? Damn it. I'm shooting right at that fucking thing and it's not hitting it. Maybe you can't shoot those, but you can sure hit them. I like how there's all kinds of little visual indicators so you can see whether you're lined up with something or not, like the, um, the straight lines on the ground. And of course the shadows, they help too. 
then right here the shadows say fuck all Whoa, UFOs. <laughs> Shit. That one was me. Uh. Oh, there's some kind of boss. I was wondering why the game wasn't moving. Shit. Piss. Well, damn, that was getting kind of interesting. Hmm. Should I give it another try? I've got time. One more shot. I've got time. I've got about, uh, let's say, uh, 70 years or so. <laughs> You can shoot those things. You just have to be a better shot. <laughs> They're actually pretty easy to shoot. wonder where uh, my frequent viewer, Mr. Tom Smith, is. I think he'd enjoy this. He's probably in bed like any sane person would be. Okay, I'm getting greedy on the fucking things. God. Okay, I'd, yeah. Okay, we're done with Zaxxon. <laughs> Maybe one day I, I will eventually get back to the boss. Okay, next game. Frontline. Yeah. Uh, which it says for use only. It's underlined. Only with the Super Action Controller set which I don't have. But, in my testing, this seemed to still work with um, the regular controller. So I will do that. One playa. Skill one. In this game, when I was... Oh, shit, that's a landmine. Don't touch that. <laughs> that's how you learn. That's how you learn what can kill you and what can't. You touch something and it blows the shit out of you. So in my playtesting of this, once I figured out what the gameplay basically was here, I was like, hmm, it's a third-person shooter. Maybe one of the first third-person shooters. Ooh, 
What the? <laughs> he gets shot and it causes him to dive for the goal line. <laughs> I wonder if these dudes can also walk on the landmines. Okay, can't kill the trees. Noted. Who the fuck are you using the tree? I'm already seeing one restriction here. They can at least aim in any direction, but I only seem to be able to shoot forward. I wonder if I can press keypad buttons to change my aiming direction. Oh, you can also go down. And it looks like no. So I can only shoot up. Of course, just because they can aim in multiple directions doesn't mean that they can actually shoot in multiple directions. In fact, I'm not actually sure that any of them have fired a single shot at me yet. Oh, there they go. Yeah, okay. Both questions answered. They can shoot diagonally, and they can shoot. And sometimes they shoot at nothing. <laughs> okay, I was just testing what that was like to shoot that. What's that thing? They, they all ran the fuck away from it, whatever it was. Oh, shit. Is that a tank? Am I supposed to get in that? Ow, fuck. Do I have to push a button to get in it? Shit! I'm trying to figure out how to get in the tank. That's even possible. <laughs> That's how you do it. <laughs> Get him up against the screen and just unload. Unless that's not actually doing anything. Piss. Wait. I hit the asterisk. Oh. Did that just pause the game? It pauses the game and blinks the screen. Okay. I'm not sure what to do. I'm just gonna go past these tanks. <laughs> I was just, <laughs> just imagining <laughs> the tank guys going back to their commander eventually, and uh, the commander's like, how did that guy get in? And the, the tank guy says, well, he just walked past us. <laughs> anyway, that's enough of that. That is Frontline. And the last game I'm going to play is Smurf Rescue in Gargamel's Castle. It has probably been about 30 years since I watched the Smurfs. <laughs> copyright Payo. So I played a little bit of this before. And I remembered the animation is very, very smooth. Look at that. They put a considerable amount of work just into the animation. Fuck! Okay, that's not how you jump over it. The piss. <laughs> You remember this episode of the Smurfs where the 
the same Smurf kept walking in the same fence and kept dying. And then you walk into a ridge and you die. It's such an anticlimactic death too, and I seem to be starting out further each time, so what the hell. I only jumped over... Yeah, I was going to say, I only jumped over that tuft of grass because I'm... Judging by all the previous obstacles, they probably kill you. Okay. <laughs> Apparently I hit the game reset button. I've gotten the hang of the jumping now. <laughs> These screens are not logically connected at all. <laughs> and the music just kind of resets randomly between screens. Oh boy, did I, did I make it to Gargamel's castle already? Piss! Okay. <laughs> nope, jump, stupid. What are you supposed to do here? some way to shoot. Hey, Jormor has joined us. Jormor says, back to YouTube? I am so confused. Yep, back to streaming on YouTube. It's actually slightly easier for me to deal with. And um, on this particular stream, I'm actually using a combined cable modem and router, whereas previously I had a separate cable modem and router, and could be coincidence, but I haven't seen any stream fuck-ups this time. <laughs> Gonna relearn how to jump. Piss! Fuck! Is it just me, or are these screens somewhat randomly generated? They seem to be a little different. Oh, come on. They seem to be a little different this time around. This first screen seems to be the same every time. See, isn't this different? I mean, we might have seen that once before, but not in the last run. So maybe there's a... Um, there's a pre-made set of screens, and then the, the sequence is somewhat random. Let's deal with these things. Oh wait, you can crouch. Can I do anything else while I'm crouching? Can I fart? My ass is pretty far up in the air right there. If this was a Wario game, I could fart. Actually, I'm trying to think of any Wario games where you actually explicitly fart, and I can't think of any. Now what the fuck to do about this skull? Ha! Dormer says, of the 
somewhat random generation. He says, does that make this roguelike game? Uh, maybe. <laughs> Although, um, there isn't nearly, nearly enough uh, instant, harsh, unforgivable death and variance thereof. Now, am I supposed to land on the 300? Do I have to do a perfect jump right here? Piss. Is that the only thing that makes this thing hard? Is you just have to do a perfect jump? Because it looks like that's Smurfette up there. Which means that's probably the end of the game. Let's, uh... One more shot. Also, I appear to be coming out of a... bloated dick. Yeah. I know it's a mushroom house. <laughs> I know that's what they live in. I can... It's my thing, so... I can call it whatever I want. So from a technical standpoint, this game is actually pretty impressive. Graphics, animation, sound, control are all pretty good. But the gameplay itself is quite simple and dull. You can't just walk off the edge of that thing. Hmm. <laughs> If there's any Cinemassacre fans watching, you can't just walk over it. actually be a, a good candidate game for speedrunning. I wonder if anybody has. Maybe there's some button you can push while you're up in the air to do a, I don't know, an attack on the way down. I'm trying variants of the jump. Whoa, whoa. Huh? It looked to me like that was a higher jump. So jump in place. I'm just pushing straight up right here on the stick. Up. Maybe that's how you do it. Okay, I'm going to try that. If I can get over the goddamn fence. <laughs> Jumping during the screen transition fucked up the sound chip. Mm -hmm. Notice how when I die that sometimes the screen changes to a slightly different layout? I'm thinking that may be intentional. So that, um, if an inexperienced gamer, such as young kids, which are probably the target audience of this game, if they're, they're on a screen and they can't make a jump over something, then the game changes to a, diff a slightly different layout to give them a different shot so they're not just permanently stuck on the same thing. Which is actually, you know, a good design idea. Okay, so. Fuck! It's too close. He killed me by the toenail. Oh my god damn.
piss. Piss. <laughs> piss. God fucking. Ugh. Again. This is really getting old. Maybe the control isn't as good as I said it was. Or the stick on this thing is just a little unresponsive. Or maybe I just suck. But I, uh believe in the proud gaming tradition of blaming the mechanism. It's not because I suck, it's the controller's broken. That one was me. I just went too far. That one, I just wasn't paying attention. It's such an anticlimactic death. Like everything stops, and all the nice animation you've been getting so far, you don't get that. He just falls instantly on his back. Okay, this time I'm not getting as close. Ah! Check that out! Did I beat the game? And it starts again. Yeah, Dwarmore's just confirmed it. He says double jump, but you need to wait to land. Mm -hmm. why I'm still playing this. Hoping in vain that maybe it's going to be a little different. <laughs> and no, it's not. That's game over. Okay, so <laughs> Dormer says, and now we do it again, but slightly differently. <laughs> now it looked like it was pretty much the same to me, but yeah, that's generally the name of the game for games this old. Anyway, uh, that's the end of my game. That's the end of this game. That's the end of the games that I was going to play on this recording. So that's the end of the recording. Uh, tune in next time where I play something. Ah, I'm good at selling it, aren't I? Anyway, uh, whenever that will be, it's going to be in a couple of days at least on the recording. Uh, live streaming, uh, today is a Friday, so next time I'm going to be live streaming is on Monday at about 9 to 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, you can uh, follow me on Twitter or on YouTube to get notified when I am doing a live stream. And you can find a link to my Twitter profile on my YouTube channel page. So, until next time, see ya.